Welcome to the media and our community and city, city of Calgary partners to the launch of the Up the Wall Graffiti Intervention Program. It has been shown time and time again that the best way to approach issues of crime is to work with partnerships in the community. The Calgary Police Service is fortunate to have so many community and government partners who are more than willing to work together to share expertise and resources in order to make our city a safe place to live and visit. Today we are talking about the issue of graffiti vandalism, which affects communities throughout Calgary. Not only does it cost taxpayers and landowners millions of dollars to remove, it impacts the perception of safety of citizens and visitors and can lead to other crime if not dealt with quickly. The most successful strategies for dealing with graffiti vandalism involve a four-pronged approach at eradication, enforcement, education, and prevention. The Calgary Police Service has a full-time graffiti coordinator who works with the City of Calgary Animal and Bylaw Services and the Calgary Transit Public Safety and Enforcement Group on what we call the Joint Graffiti Investigation Team. This multi-agency group focuses on investigating graffiti vandalism and graffiti offenders in Calgary, providing the eradication and enforcement component of the overall strategy. The pilot of Up the Wall program that we are announcing today will now deliver the final two portions of our overall graffiti management strategy, namely community education and prevention. We have been working towards this for approximately three years. With the dedication of our partners, the program is now set to launch in early June. We could not have done this without the partnership of the Boys and Girls Club of Calgary who have stepped up to provide the case management and program development that will form the basis of this initiative. We have worked with this organization throughout its 75 year history. So collaborating on this project just makes sense. I'd also like to thank the City of Calgary Arts and Culture for providing the space as well as the access to their network and artists who will help work with the youth sharing their knowledge and expertise. And of course, this program could not have gone ahead without the funding of the City of Calgary Animal and Bylaw Services, funding through the Crime Prevention Investment Fund. There will be many amazing opportunities to work with other partners. For example, some of the art produced through this program could be displayed in areas of the city, working with groups like the Downtown Business Association. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, one of our main partners in the program Up the Wall, Cheryl Doherty, the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club of Calgary. Cheryl? Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It is certainly a pleasure for Boys and Girls Club uh, to be a partner in this truly innovative program called Up the Wall. It is really a wonderful day in Calgary when five or so partner groups can come together uh, develop and implement a crime prevention gra graffiti abatement program for this city. The collaboration will of course include the youth, their voice, their families and their ex the extended community in, here in Calgary because it is absolutely important for all of these people to come together to make this program truly important. And, and, and successful. Up the Wall will be seen as a unique intervention program that will include mentors, artists working with the youth, restorative justice, some life skills, leadership skills program. And we, I think we all know that when you start building really positive relationships with youth, offer them opportunities that they've never had before, decrease some of the barriers that are in their lives, uh, that they really do have a fighting chance to resist gang involvement, to make better choices for themselves, and certainly not get involved in the graffiti culture. These kids can become leaders in our community given the right tools, the right mentors, and the right experiences. And that is what this really exciting program is all about. Through the arts and mentorship based program, our youth can graduate from this program and actually come back as peer mentors and share their successes and share their learnings along the way. Once again, our Calgary community understands that if we come together in this collective impact model, we can engage these youth youth, we can keep them in school, we can also keep them from other criminal activities and really help them reach their personal goals. Thank you and I'd now like to introduce Dawn Ford from the City of Calgary. Hi 
Hi, I'm Dawn Ford. I'm a program coordinator with the Public Art Program in the Culture Division. And we look for ways to support creative expression within Calgary in as many ways as possible. Graffiti as an art form is an accepted art form. It is one of the most commercially successful art forms in history. It's found in museums around the world, as long as it's done in a legitimate and appropriate fashion. So in order to support graffiti artists within Calgary, we're trying to create a graffiti strategy through public art that will help support positive ways of graffiti expression in Calgary. And the Up the Wall program is one uh, great step forward in that graffiti strategy and working toward youth, really got, gathering them early on in their artistic career, teaching them appropriate means to work within the history and the expression of art, and actually put that on our streets in a way that can be enjoyed positively by the whole community. Thank you. It is interesting when we're dealing, we're talking about crime and uh, we're talking about art in the City of Calgary and the Boys and Girls Club, it really is a partnership that will make this happen. So I can't thank you enough, Cheryl and Don, for your partnership with us and I look forward to its success. I know it will be. Uh, I have one other person I'd like to introduce, Tanya McCarity, who's the Manager Employment of Employment Programs for the Boys and Girls Club who will talk a little bit about the program and will answer program related questions. And I should tell you we're going to have an opportunity to ha have questions at the end of this of all the folks that have been talking. And, but Tanya, please. Hi. Thank you. First off, I'd just like to say how excited I am personally to be a part of this pilot project as well as everyone at the Boys and Girls Club and not to mention this fabulous lack of better word, awesome collaboration that we have going on here. The Up the Roll program is going to be delivered over 12 weeks and we plan on running three sessions of 12 weeks throughout a year. Sessions are going to focus on education as well as restorative justice. We plan on building mentorships as everyone spoke to with local artists as w and to visit the idea of what is the root of this crime. Plus explore issues of social justice, the history, of graffiti and positive civic engagement. The twice weekly sessions will provide the youth with education about the negative impact on graffiti behavior and an opportunity for self-expression while engaging in community enhancing activities. This program is a vehicle for youth to develop life skills in key areas such as civic, civic engagement, social justice, problem solving and employment. Plus, one of the key things that we always talk about at the Boys and Girls Club is to help our youth develop relationships with their peers and the adults in their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. I myself believe that this program is going to have a positive impact on our, the youth in our communities as well as local Cal Calgarians. So thank you. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Nailed it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as we talked about, this has been a developing program over three years. So we've looked at many different models as well as one, the main one was in Vancouver. And you know how su successful that program is? Extremely. In terms of what? <laughs> um, where, where do we see, do, where do we Dawn, see the did you want to speak to that? Um, sure. She, yeah. <clears throat> Um, when we were doing research for the program, uh, we, we collected, gathered a, a series of models. The, the one in Vancouver was particularly successful in creating a new community for the graffiti under, offenders who participated. So a lot of what they're looking for is a group to be part of. And so by, by redirecting them into a more positive group that has a, an outlet in the community where they can still express, um, we find that they, uh, they recreate a new community and move forward in that way. So that's one of the, the positive things out of Vancouver. Um, in this particular program I know there's a follow-up and I can let you speak to how they'll be following up to evaluate to evaluate success we will follow follow the youth from a three uh, six and a year and as Cheryl mentioned we will invite the successful candidates to come back as mentors in the next the next sessions we also do do a sort of uh, survey with the caregivers that are with the youth on a day-to-day -day basis as well as a pre and post test so we will evaluate the youth at the beginning and see and then evaluate them at the end. Did Vancouver see a big reduction in graffiti? Illegal graffiti? Yes. <laughs> Did the law enforcement want to speak to that? 
We can tell you that the program in Vancouver, there was a reduction in graffiti, a reduction of the overall charges of the folks that were involved in the program. That was one of the successes. The people that entered the program had an opportunity. Um, we could see where they were being charged, coming into conflict with the law. Once they were in the program, how that decreased. You have to remember there are other things that are associated with the graffiti that are involved. There are addiction issues and those other things that can be addressed when we're part of a whole case management strategy, which this will be part of. Can you guys talk about, because you, you touched on it, you said graffiti is the most successful form of art in history, but it's crime. And sort of that juxtaposition. Sure. <laughs> you should stay. <laughs> you should stay. Um, Um, graffiti as an art form is a stylistic expression of uh, a, a modern way of thinking and it's about creating a way of people thinking differently in the world. That's really what the intention of the form is. When it started in New York it was intended to be illegal and that was how it began. The movement has moved away into a gallery setting and uh, you see our most successful street artists now are actually being showcased in galleries around the world. Everybody knows about Banksy. Um, Swoon is, is, is all over. They, you know, and graffiti is seen on skateboards and t-shirts and letterhead and it's all over the, the um, marketing world. So what we'd like to see is uh, artists who want to express in this style move toward expressing in those ways where it can be used as a marketing tool, as something that is successful for them as an artist where they can design and actually make it a career. But to start, you have to break the law. No. Um, there are ways to mitigate that and there are ways that we can practice the art form in a studio setting and that's exactly what we're doing with this course. We're teaching them how to do it on canvas, how to do it in sketchbooks and frankly even uh, the most successful street artists actually tell youth who want to go into this form, stop practicing on walls. That's just vandalism. If you want to be an artist, learn your craft before you hit the street and when you hit the street, do it in a way that's going to make it look good. If I can just add to that yeah. for a moment. We've had a huge cry out. We have had no problems finding mentors or local artists who are willing to participate in this program saying, I wish I had this when I was 12 to 17. Because they are well aware of what is illegal and what's legal. So the big portion of this is an education piece as well as the caregivers of the youth and education on what is graffiti and what is not. Since this is a obviously a program focus for those aged 12 to 17. In, I don't know if somebody could speak about just Calgary specifically or even Alberta. When you find youth who have been involved in graffiti, uh, illegal or what have you, can you maybe talk about what the motivation is behind it? Is it most cases, is it about crime? Is it about expression? Is it about perhaps feeling a certain sense of alienation? I mean, because we're trying to get to the root causes of the issue. So I don't know if somebody can maybe comment on, at least here in the city, if there are specific kind of themes that we usually see for you here? I think when we see in Calgary, and I, I think it's not a Calgary experience, but it is about community. It's about wanting to belong. And you look to create that wherever you are, and it's around your medium. It could be around, the community could be around sports for some kids. This is around art. So that is the community that they belong to. They express it in an illegal fashion. So when we look at a, a program like Up the Wall, and you have this exciting partnership with business groups like the Downtown Business Association and you let them have a chance to take it from an illegal activity to an art form and have it displayed, they can be part of the art community in a legal fashion. So it's trying to find a place to belong. And you always look as a young person, what is my area to be able to belong? So it's about us working together and taking that and making it into a legal fashion. So keeping the community together. So are these kids that take part in this program, are they going to go into it because they choose to go into it or because they're mandated to the courts? Certainly, I think the goal of Up the Wall is we can see youth before they're charged. That's everything the Calgary Police Service and our partners are driving to is we don't need them to come into contact with law enforcement, with the judge and the prosecutor. We can see them beforehand. We can see them at school. We can see them in the community. And that's where we'll look to join them. Certainly, though, we can work with the courts and we do. We have a relationship and up the wall with the courts so it could be mandated. But we're looking for the best success will be young people that we get before they're charged. So the kids, will, they'll, they'll choose to join this and that will... Yes. Do they then apply or... Well, the application form as they go through, do, do we have the... How it will exactly work? Sure. So it will be a referral through law enforcement um, and there is an intake process with our caseworker 
through Boys and Girls Club, and it is a choice. The youth. So it's prior to the charge. So one of the options may be this program or charge. But it's always a choice. At this stage, that's that's how it is. Yes. No. No, we're not going schools oh, no. to schools. Um, I th I think we may so get referrals from school, like, like as we, since it's a pilot. Thanks. Well, I would say, like I said to Tanya before, we see children. Sometimes we're dealing with a child in a family, but we see the siblings of that family, and we can see what's starting in that family. So we can go to those other kids in the family. Even they have no involvement with anything illegal. They have no involvement yet with the Calgary Police Service or any enforcement agency. But we can see that they're struggling in the family. And we can see that maybe art is the one way to connect with them, and we would refer them to the program. We could, we wor we could work with, and we will work, with our school board partners. They will see young people who are struggling, and art might be the key for them. So why wouldn't we allow them into the program? I can tell you the first program is full. So we already have the folks already ready to go in our first group. So. There will be no lack of young people that we can reach out to, connect, get them to understand, create community. And in the city of Calgary, this program will be full. So the, the kids that are in the first one, they've already, been, they've already come in contact with you guys for doing graffiti? Some have, some haven't. Some are just like I told you, that we can see them in family situations and it would be a great program to, to connect with them. And how many people is that? Tell me, how much is in the first one? We... The maximum intake for each session is 12. And then they, they visit twice a week, so we see them for a maximum of six hours a week. Good questions. So what's the, um, it's being funded through um, bylaw, how much? The, the cost of the program? Crime Prevention Fund, paid for. Oh, I'll give you the cash term. So we, uh, from the Crime Prevention Investment Fund, we received $132,000. What's the cost of the program? Two years. For two, for two years. For two years of the program. What kind of fine are these kids facing if they choose court instead of, uh, instead of the program? Hi, Ron Basso, Bylaw Services. Uh, the fines range uh, for youth, it's $1,000. Uh, specified penalty if they had a summons an adult so 18 and over is five thousand uh, dollars transit has the same and there is also the option of being charged under the criminal code so mischief to property so you're damaging someone's property and that ranges to whatever um, can uh, the judge decides so it could be conditions uh, probation, fines, community service, uh, whatever whatever works out in the court system. Have you seen graffiti incidents go up in the last, say, five, ten years? Uh, the numbers have gone up through the SR complaints, but part of that is due to uh, the fact that we've made reporting a lot easier uh, through bylaw services. Last year they had the bylaw app that came out and you could report graffiti under other. Now we have the graffiti app. Oh, we have web in intake for 311. So it's made, um, it's, it's made reporting a lot easier, and it's also through education to the public, general public and stuff, and more involvement in the communities. There's, people are becoming more aware. They're paying more attention to it. So our numbers, reporting numbers have gone up, but in a lot of areas, the actual offenses have gone down. So the bylaw definition of graffiti um, is, is basically an image, writing or anything, sticker um, put up uh, without permission and that's the main thing is without permission and it can be done by spray paint, marker, uh, etch in glass, uh, pretty much any means of damage to, to a property that falls under the graffiti. Definitions. Uh, are there any current uh, figure uh, for in our college graffiti costs the city? People say millions, but um, is there a going number? 
Um, I don't have that number offhand. Um, there's the cleanup varies depending on the medium that was used. Uh, glass etching is very expensive to uh, repair because you're basically replacing the glass. Uh, it can't be buffed out. So, uh, there's acid etching, which damages the surface. And um, spray paint is a little bit more harder to remove than a marker. Uh, so it, it depends on the medium that is used in, in for cost removal. Uh, not offhand, no, sorry. 